is going on everyone, Xena Productions here, welcome back to another video. So today, I've got, obviously, a pretty long video here, and it's for good reason, because the Super Bowl obviously just happened yesterday, with obviously the two teams being the Seattle Seahawks and the New England Patriots. Now, on this Super Bowl, I would rate it like a 9 out of 10. Uh, I think it was a pretty good Super Bowl, actually. I'm surprised that it turned out to be that close. But the best part to me was the morning of the Super Bowl, my dad asked me what I thought the final score was going to be. And I said Patriots were going to win 28-24. to And ironically enough, that's the exact score that happened. So that's the first time I've ever guessed the right score of a football game, like, perfectly. And I'm pretty proud of that. But... Nevertheless, it was a very fantastic Super Bowl from start to finish. Uh, the first half went by very, very quickly. Uh, the first quarter flew by. I think there was only eight penalties that were actually accepted going into the fourth quarter. There were hardly any penalties at all. Um, it was just a really smooth first quarter. I believe it was scoreless after the first quarter. And um, then, like, early second, I believe, um, is when points started going on the board. But, you know... It was uh, it was a great battle. It was a great battle. Um, it was basically momentum shifting the entire time, and it's obviously going to go down in history as a very very phenomenal Super Bowl. But one thing I ha do have to talk about is the dumbest call of the century by either the Seahawks offensive coordinator or the or um. Wow, I forgot his name. The head coach of the Seahawks. I've just been saying his name for the past 10 minutes and I just forgot. Pete Carroll. Well, I, I, my, my mind goes dead when I record. But if it was Pete Carroll who made that call at the end of the game, then he is absolutely ridiculously... I'm sorry, but I think he's dumb. I think he's dumb because of that call. Now, for you Seahawks fans, I feel for you guys. I'm sorry for you guys. You guys did not get beaten in the Super Bowl. You guys got beat by your own coach. So, hats off to you guys for hanging in there. But ultimately, in, in the end, you guys... I mean, after that play call, you guys just didn't deserve to win it. I'm sorry. After that play call, P. Carroll didn't deserve to get the ring. Um, so, in the end, guys, Seahawks fans, P. Carroll beat you. It wasn't the Patriots. It was P. Carroll. Um, now, if you don't, the play I'm talking about is, um, I'll get the, I'll get into that in a little bit, but let's go over a quick little analysis. Uh, Rob Gronkowski looks pretty good out there. In the second half, it looked like he started limping a little bit in the fourth quarter, but then again, he still made plays even with his limp in the fourth quarter. It was crazy to see how the, how that guy hung in there. He caught, a, I think, one, only one touchdown pass, but he got a lot of big plays in there. Um, the Patriot wide receivers had great days. Uh, Blunt, Blunt didn't have the best day, but he had an okay day. Marshawn Lynch, um, key factor for the Seahawks, had a pretty decent day. No really big breakout runs, but he did score, I think, a touchdown. And, um, he could have scored the game winner, but, you know, we'll get into that in a second, like I said, but... Uh, Richard, Richard Sherman had an okay day. I mean, he was playing with that with that bad arm, and when, I think in the first drive of the game, he missed a tackle that he would have normally made super easily in the backfield, and he missed that tackle, maybe because his arm just wasn't 100%. Um, you know, the, both teams were banged up. That's that's what the Super Bowl is like. But with the Super Bowl, if you have a 100% team in the Super Bowl, you're going to win by a lot. And, I mean, the... The odds of every starter on your team being 100% come February is absolutely insanely small. Like, the re it's ridiculous. So, the Seahawks absolutely were banged up. This, the, Patri the Patriots were banged up. Um, you know, it, it, was, it was a banged up looking sort of game. Nevertheless, I mean, the, it, it was a crazy finish. It made me sit on the edge of my seat because I knew that I was going to watch history. I, I knew I was going to watch history um, unfold because when it was 1 minute 50 seconds left, Russell Wilson just got the ball after the Patriots scored their touchdown to take the lead 28-24. to Now, I said, I was watching this with my dad, and I turned to him and I said, the next 1 minute and 50 seconds are going to describe, pay uh, not paying money, Tom Brady's career. Like I said, the next minute 50 seconds are going to be how we remember Tom Brady and Bill Belichick because I do honestly believe that that might have been their last game. Now, 
I'm not saying I'm certain, but I, what I was expecting is for a retirement to come out of both of those guys by the end of this game. You know, they've been to six Super Bowls, they've been to nine AFC Championships. What more can you ask for? Brady finally got his Super Bowl one more time. Um, so. I think this might have been the end of their ride, maybe not, if it's not, I'm going to be pissed because I want these guys to get out of the way for other teams to get in there. I don't want the Patriots to be the number one seed every single year, but if they stay, it, I mean, it is what it is, but Brady's 37, about to be 38 eventually. Um, that's pretty tough for a football player to be so consistent like Brady is, he's just one of the rare greatness um, in football, and you know... Like I said, the next minute 50 will be how we remember Brady and Belichick because this this probably their last Super Bowl that they would make it to, and um, you know it was it started off with Russell Wilson do what he does best and using his legs. Russell Wilson the entire night broke broke free in the backfield and made a lot of yards out of it. Um, a lot of the Patriots' key defensemen could not get a hand on him and he got ran around him and he went for big plays. So, um. I mean, Russell Wilson really did his part. He really did his part. It wasn't his fault in the end. And, um, you know, it was... It, Russell Wilson got the ball um, with... I can't remember how much time was left. I believe it was a minute 50 left when he got the ball on his uh, potential game-winning drive. And he... All he had to do was, you know, move down the field, score a touchdown in, one, in 150. One minute 50. I think he had two timeouts, I think. And um, he, he did mostly that. And what it came down to really in the end was the greatest catch I've ever seen. Now, this was obviously luck. The catch that, I can't remember the receiver's name, but the catch, the, the circus bobble catch that he made was beyond wildness. Now, as soon as he made that catch, I looked at my dad and said, we just witnessed history because they were down to like the five yard line. That was like, that was like an automatic touchdown, you know? It was an automatic touchdown, basically. Uh, they were down to the five. I said, we just witnessed history. He just made that catch. That's going to lead to a score for a touchdown in the Super Bowl win. We just witnessed the catch that's going to send Brady into retirement. And, obviously, they were still going back to, like, um, David Tyreed's catch, Mario Manningham's catch. Now, that guy's catch. All three Super Bowls that Tom Brady was playing and that he lost. And... They didn't know what was about to happen. So after one of the greatest catches I've ever seen, and I've watched a lot of football, trust me. I've been watching, I remember every single football game I've ever watched since I was like five years old, right? Um, so I've been watching football for more than half my life, more than almost three quarters of my life. So I know football. I know a lot of football. I know the ins and outs of it. I live football. I love football football so I haven't seen a catch like that in a while and after that I'm like you know what I don't even care who wins anymore they need to score this touchdown because I want that catch to be remembered I want that catch to be in Super Bowl history as the catch that gave a Super Bowl win <sighs> then the dumbest call I've ever seen in the Super Bowl happens Pete Carroll First down, runs the ball, Marshawn Lynch doesn't get too much, gets maybe two yards. Now they're down to the three. Three yards to go. Obviously four down territory, so you got three downs to go. You gotta get three yards. You've got the most powerful running back in the entire league. We're talking a running back that does that can't just that doesn't just shred one tackle. We're talking a running back that shreds a good five men on his back and can still carry the ball a good five, six yards, alright? And Marshawn Lynch is a monster. He can carry four defensive men on his shoulders and still gain an extra five yards. He's carried the entire defense and pushed a couple of yards before, alright? You've got the most monstrous refrigerator of a court I mean of a running back you will ever see. You've got three yards to go and three plays. And they run a slant route. They run a slant route. They run a slant pattern pass play to the goal line. And out comes a shoe salesman from a sporting goods store in New England to pick off the ball at the goal line. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, now, I'm not a Patriots fan. I'm not a Seahawks fan. I didn't care who won. But just the agony of how you lose like that. I would be fine if I lost the Super Bowl by 10 points, you know. But if I lost the Super Bowl by throwing an interception on the one-yard line, that's just something I'd never get over. 
that's just something that would just haunt me for my entire life. And obviously the Seahawks are the most penalized team in the NFL for their freaking offsides and encroachment. Brady still has to get out of the end zone. You know, he's like on the half yard line. Brady can't kneel down the ball. He's still got his quarterback sneaking out of there. If they can stop him, push him back, they got a safety. They kick the free kickoff. Russell Wilson's got a good 20 seconds to move 40 yards down the field and score a game-winning field goal because they'd be only down by two then. But no, no, uh, I can't remember if it was Chandler or who, Bennett. I think it was Bennett. Jumped, encroach, jumped off sides, got encroachment, which obviously erupted a big fight. And ultimately, Patriots win the Super Bowl. So, it was, the Seahawks choked. I, I don't know what else to say. The Seahawks choked. They, they had it. They had it in their grasp. Pete Carroll, Pete Carroll's a great coach. He, he's never made bad calls. That was the first bad call Pete Carroll's ever made. I don't think he should be um, relied on in those situations anymore. Pete Carroll, great coach. Keep him in Seattle by far. I mean, he's gotten them to two Super Bowls two years in a row. He's won one of them by like 40 points. So, um, Pete Carroll's a legendary coach already. He's gotten to two Super Bowls. He might even make a run at it next year. But all I'm saying is the Seahawks, they, they got gypped by their own coach. So, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think about this Super Bowl. Whew. Let me know, guys. Let me know. So, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. I will see you guys all later. Take care. Have a nice day. And goodbye.